television producers and publishers have discovered that sorcery sells. And they're capitalizing on this. And they are producing a vast array of movies and shows and books that all make witchcraft seem to be fun for kids. And I think the parents are naive when they see no connection between the popularity of Harry Potter and the popularity of real witchcraft. Revelation 18.23 says, through sorcery, all nations were deceived. Welcome back to our final program in this special series called Hour of the Witch. We've talked so far about how witchcraft has gone mainstream. We've talked about the Harry Potter Wicca connection. We've talked about what's wrong with Wicca. The fourth program was called The Alternative, The Man with the Scars about Jesus Christ. And our last program is called Defense Against the Dark Arts. Uh, as we've been talking about Wicca witchcraft, I mentioned this before, and I want to mention it again, that one of the fundamental doctrines of modern witchcraft, which is surprising to a lot of people, but it's true, is that they don't believe in the devil. Now, a lot of people need to understand that. A lot of people think witches are just pure, open Satan worshipers. Well, they're not. They don't even believe in Satan. Here's a quote from uh, the best-selling book, Teen Witch, Wicca for a New Generation, written by Silver Ravenwolf, and she says, quote, witches don't believe in the devil. The devil belongs to the Christian religion, not to the old ways. That's what she says, and that's, on, uh, that's in the beginning of her, of her book. Well, that's what witchcraft teaches, but that is not what this book says. That's not what the Bible says. When you read Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, the Bible says that the great dragon was cast out. We talked about how Lucifer fell. He was kicked out of heaven. And then it says the serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives how many people? It says he deceives the whole world. It says he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So when you read the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9, it says there's a real Satan, a real devil. He was kicked out of heaven and now he's here and he's deceiving the world. And part of that world that he's deceiving includes a lot of people who are into Wicca witchcraft who don't believe that the devil exists. Another powerful passage is in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. This is a very important section for us to read. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, against what? Against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Uh, witchcraft teaches, the, teaches that there's only one power, it's neutral. The Bible says there's two powers, the power of God and the power of the devil. And this verse says that we are in a battle between these two powers. And it's an intense battle. It's an earnest battle, and it's going on, it's going on right now. There's another verse in Revelation 9 I want to share with you. This verse also talks about witchcraft. Revelation chapter 9, verses 20 and 21. The Bible here talks about how people will not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons, it says. And then verse 21 says, they did not repent of their murders or of their sorceries. So verse 21 talks about sorcery, and verse 20, 20 talks about the worship of demons. And what's the problem with Wicca is they don't believe in demons, and they're practicing sorcery, and they don't realize that in practicing sorcery, they're opening themselves up to demons. And that's what the Bible says, and that's why we're doing this seminar. One reason is to issue, is to issue a warning. I want to tell you a little bit right now about a lady that I have been in contact with for a couple of months. Her name is Pam. Uh, Pam grew up in a Christian home, and Pam got into Wicca. She thought it was a friendly thing. She finally got out. She had a terrible experience, and she's just now getting the strength uh, and she finally decided she was fearful, but 
finally she decided to go public with her testimony. She has given me her testimony. And this is what Pam said. She said, I tried to kill myself three times. She said, I was diagnosed with, a, with multiple personality disorder. And it's true, I did have multiple personalities. But what was the source? She said, I was into, into Wicca. She said, I had books, the wands, the cauldron, the, can the candles, the altar, the ju jewelry, the ruins, everything, thousands of dollars worth of witchcraft material. She said, I think most people are attracted to Wicca for the same reason I was, the need for power, the need to protect oneself, the need to worship, and especially the need to belong. The insidious part is that the power is actually taken away from you. And it's all, the power that you think you're getting is all a facade. Wicca is not a game to play at, she says. It is pure witchcraft entirely of the devil. There are some who think, they argue, that there is white or good magic and black or evil magic. She says, this is not true. All witchcraft, all sorcery, all incantations, all rites and ceremonies that invoke gods and goddesses are evil, very evil. I could always tell when an evil presence was coming over me. It's like all of a sudden your thoughts are dark, your emotions are muted, and you feel like you're all powerful. Remember I talked about the appeal of Wicca is the need for power? Well, she said this power came into her and she thought she was very powerful, but then she realized it was an evil power. A pretty amazing chain of events eventually took me right from the midst of Wicca to facing Jesus Christ head on. As I emailed uh, Pam and we discussed this whole thing I talked about, I mentioned that the movies like Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Harry Potter and all the books that are out there and all the websites for teenagers and how kids are just getting into this left and right and they think it's friendly, they think it's wholesome, they think it's white magic. Uh, this was her response to me. She was so, she was so saddened by this and she, cause she knows anyway, but, but as I told her more about what's going on, she said, all those kids being sucked into the devil's hands, he must be delighted. These kids are like lambs being sent to the slaughter. Wow. Now this is a lady, folks, that has been there. She was in the church, she went into Wicca, she came out, and she can testify that there is a real battle going on. She was in the middle of it, and then she said, it hasn't been more than a few weeks since I absolutely turned myself over to Jesus Christ. It just about overwhelms me when I think of where I've been and where I am now. Here is a testimony of someone that's been there. She's done that. She knows by personal experience it's not a game, it's real, and she got out. Thank God. There's a verse in Colossians, chapter 1, verse 13. It's there on the screen, and it says that, that God has delivered us. He has delivered us from the power of darkness, and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. As I made the decision, I didn't, I didn't initiate getting into this topic. Uh, there was a series of events that led me to get into researching Wicca and then writing my, my new book, Hour of the Witch, and then eventually coming here and doing this television series. Uh, the Lord led me into this, and I, and I knew that I was entering a battle. I was entering a contest with principalities and powers. And I, I hope and I pray that God will take these programs and that he will, he will bathe them in his power and that he will use them to shed light into as many people's minds as possible that watch this program and that read the book and to direct them to the Bible and to help people to realize that this popular movement today, one of the fastest, fastest growing movements in, in the world right now, in America as well, Wicca witchcraft is very dangerous. It is a doorway uh, to the devil and God wants people's eyes to be open and he wants to get us out of these things. He, and, and even if we're not into witchcraft, if we are stuck uh, in sin or whatever habits or whatever things that we're struggling with, there is power in Jesus Christ. There is power in his love. There is power in the cross. There is power in this book. There is power in the Holy Spirit. And this verse on the screen, Colossians 1.13, says that God will deliver us from the power of darkness and he will translate us into the kingdom of his dear son, the son who gave his life on the cross for all of us. That's what it's all about. That's why we're here. And I hope and pray that God will use this program powerfully to open a lot of eyes and to take them out of Satan's power, just like Pam, and to bring them to the power and the love and the goodness of Jesus Christ.
Welcome back as we near the conclusion of this special series on witchcraft. Uh, we will continue right now dealing with defense against the dark arts. We've talked about the Harry Potter Wicca connection, that there is a connection in spite of the naivety of many parents who don't think that there is. And one of them has to do with this whole idea of defense against the dark arts. Here's a quote on the screen from the book Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, page 134. It says, the class that everyone was looking forward to was defense against the dark arts. When Harry was at Hogwarts, he takes all these classes. And in one of these classes, he learns how to protect himself from evil through casting spells. This is the very same philosophy of Wicca witchcraft. It's exactly the same. Uh, in this book, Teen Witch, Wicca for a New Generation, I've showed you this book before, chapter 9, and this is the real stuff written by a real witch, and it says in chapter 9, it's all about protection and how we need to protect ourselves in our homes and our families and our friends, and one of the ways she says we can protect ourselves is through witchcraft. Um, Pam, who I talked about in the last segment, found out to her horror that the protection that witchcraft offers is a facade. You cannot protect yourself from evil by casting good spells. You can't do it. You can't defend yourself from evil through witchcraft. The Bible tells us how we can defend ourselves from the dark arts. The Bible has many different things. In Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 17, it talks about the importance of putting on the whole armor of God, and it's through wearing God's armor. It's through following the truth. It's, it's through following righteousness that we can protect ourselves. Now, I'm going to share with you just a few basic principles of defense against the dark arts, and we need these. I mean, we're in the middle of a battle. We are contending with supernatural forces, and there's no way that we can fight them on our own. There's no way that I can do it. There's no way that you can do it. And I'm just going to share with you a series of five simple truths that will help you to protect yourself and your family from the dark arts that are all around us and trying to get in and to invade our lives. Uh, the first thing is in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. And this is foundational. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The first thing we need to do in order to find any kind of defense from God is, number one, to confess our sins. Uh, it is sin that is the doorway for the devil. Sin is the devil's door. The, this, all the problems in this world are because of sin. When Adam and Eve sinned, they opened the door, and Satan, Satan came in. A friend of mine once said, if you give him a toehold, he'll take a foothold and then a stronghold. And if we want to have any supernatural protection from God, we have to make a choice to turn away from the things that we know, the things that we know are wrong. So that is the first defense, is to confess and make a choice to turn away from sin. The second defense is found in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. And this is a very, very powerful defense that we need so desperately, and it's so good. Verse 10 says, they over, verse 11, Revelation 12, 11 says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. We confess our sins, and number two, we trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says we can overcome through the blood of the Lamb. I don't fully understand it, but I can tell you that demons hate the blood of Jesus. They can't, they can't stand it. The blood of Jesus represents his life, his sacrifice, his merits. And we need to make a choice to, to turn away from self and to look to Christ, to look to his merits and his righteousness, not our own. And if you trust in the blood of Jesus, uh, his forgiveness is available for you, and there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Witchcraft is trying to teach people that they can be gods and goddesses. Well, all we have to do is look in the mirror and know that's not true. We get old, we get gray-haired, we have all kinds of problems. Uh, we, just can't, we just can't be God or God on our own. And the root of it is really self. And I, I think that we don't have to practice witchcraft, we can practice self-craft. And we need to surrender self confess our sins, and trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. And God will put that protection over us, and that's what Revelation 12, 10 says, that they overcome through the blood of the Lamb. Defense number three is found in Psalm 101. Psalm 101, verse 2 and 3, David said, I will set nothing wicked before my eyes, and he said, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. 
And this talks about what we do within our houses. We need to make a choice to get rid of the evil that may be in our homes, whether it's uh, occult books or magazines or games or TV shows that we may be watching or movies or websites that we go to, even if it's uh, pornography, if it's not witchcraft, anything that we know of that's evil that's in our homes, we have to make a decision to get rid of these things. Confess your sins, trust the blood of Jesus, and get evil out of your home. That is foundation for defense against the dark arts. Point number four, defense number four is found in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, and it said, John said, we have fellowship one with another. We can't make it on our own. We need Christian friends. We need fellowship with other believers. That verse says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Uh, some of my closest friends, my closest friends, not some of them, but my closest friends are now, they didn't used to be, but now they're followers of Jesus. They're followers of the Bible. I need all the Christian fellowship that I can get. I need all the good influences around me that I can get. I need people praying for me. I need uh, accountability. And that is a very practical and powerful defense against the dark arts is to surround yourself, yourselves with friends that are going to be leading you in the right direction. Do you know how lions catch their prey? Well, what they do is they separate an animal from the herd and then they move in for the kill. That's the way lions catch their prey, isolate and destroy. And we need to surround ourselves with friends that are following God in the Bible to help barricade us from the influences of evil. Uh, the fourth, or the last one, the fifth point, is in Matthew 3, verse 3 and 4, when Jesus was tempted by the devil, Jesus said to him, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We need to memorize the Bible. We need to memorize Scripture. We need to have this word in our minds. That's the way Jesus overcame was he quoted Scripture when he was tempted by Satan. Uh, I was amazed to have Pam email me and tell me that right after she gave her life to Christ, she was still struggling with temptation. And on her computer, all of a sudden, images started showing up right on her desktop, images from the goddess. And they were saying, this is from the goddess. Don't do it. Come back. They were telling her all kinds of things. And then they would explode in front of her. And she felt, the, I mean, on the computer screen. And she felt like she was being completely harassed by evil forces, satanic forces. And she knew it. And I, I gave her a Bible verse. I emailed her back. And I said, Pam, read Romans chapter 16, verse 20. And she told me other things that I'm not going to share with you. But she was in the middle of a war. And she was struggling with Satan's power. Witchcraft says the goddess is friendly. You talk to Pam and she'll tell you that goddess isn't friendly at all. Once she tried to leave the goddess's clutches, the goddess tried to get her back and tried to scare her to death. And really, behind the goddess is the devil, right? There is no goddess, it's just Satan and demons. That's what it's all about. I gave her this passage, Romans chapter 16, verse 20. I said, Pam, read this verse, memorize this verse. Use scripture against the devil. Romans 16, verse 20 says, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. I gave that text where I said, Pam, meditate on this text. Claim this text. This verse says that God will crush Satan under your feet shortly through Jesus Christ. And so she memorized it, and then she took this text, and she hit the devil. She hit him right between the eyes with this verse, so to speak. And finally, she emailed me, and she said, the victory's here. She said, praise God, I'm, I'm free, I'm clean. She uh, regained her courage. She was really getting discouraged again. And then she finally emailed me, and she said, I'm going to be baptized. I'm going to give my life completely to Jesus, and I'm going to be baptized uh, to seal it for sure. And I just look at all that, and I know that that's what we need. Number one, confess your sins. Number two, trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. Number three, get rid of evil from your home if it's there. Number four, stick with other believers that are in the light. And number five, memorize scripture and quote it against the devil just like Jesus did. This is real defense against the dark art. There's no defense in casting good spells. There's only defense from God and from Jesus Christ. And may the Lord help us, may he teach us true defense against the dark arts because we're getting, in, we're getting close to the darkest period of this world's history. And we need all the defense and all the light that we can get. Isn't that right? So may God help us. May he surround us with his love and with his protection so we can be free from the power of the devil.
Thank you for sticking with me. We've reached the conclusion of this powerful series on witchcraft and the Bible. I'd like to finish with one last text, actually two texts from the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 23. Revelation 18, 23, this is the last book of the Bible, says that through sorcery, all the nations were deceived. Do you see that? There it is on the screen. It says, by your sorcery, talking about the sorcery of Babylon, all the nations were deceived. This, this verse is not a fiction verse. It's about real sorcery deceiving real people who are being deceived by a real devil at the end of time. And I don't want to be, be deceived by any of this, do you? That's what this is all about. That's why God gives us a warning. As I thought about, as I've thought about the children today, and I'm a new dad, and I have a, a, a concern for kids, and that's why, that's why we're doing this series, one of the main reasons. Satan knows that one of the best ways to influence kids today is not through just teaching them doctrines, but it's through stories. It's through telling them stories. And that's what Hollywood's doing with Sabrina the Teenage Witch, with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, with the Charmed series, and especially with the Harry Potter series. Uh, these stories are appealing to the hearts of, of kids and teenagers and adults, and they are influencing them to check out real, real witchcraft, which is growing all around us. And I see all of this as part of a final end time trend, which is designed to desensitize people to the occult and eventually to suck them in to the real thing. And that's what this warns us about. By your sorcery were all the nations deceived. God has a better plan for us. He doesn't want us to be duped by the darkness. He doesn't want us to get sucked in by the subtle tricks and devices of the enemy. And he gives us an alternative. The last verse I want to read is from Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. And this is the Lord's appeal to the whole human family, to a mixed up world, to every single one of us. Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, the Bible says, and the spirit, and this is the Holy Spirit, not a spirit that comes from witchcraft, the spirit and the bride say what? Say, come. And let him who hears, let him say, come. And let him who is thirsty, let him come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. This appeal is, is for everybody. And we are in a time of midnight darkness. We are in a time when real sorcery is sweeping the globe. And God wants to send his light, his message, his truth, his voice, his gospel, his love. And I want you to know that when Jesus Christ came down here, Jesus died for you, he died for me, he died for Buddhists, he died for Hindus, he died for Muslims, and he died for those that are into witchcraft. He died for every Wiccan and every witch. God loves them all, and he's calling them, just like he's calling you and calling me, and only Jesus Christ can satisfy us. And so I leave this verse with you, I appeal to you, I hope that you'll read it and accept it and respond. And there it says right there in verse 17, it says, whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. God is offering us the water of life. And it's up to you to make a choice, to turn from sin and to reach out your hand and to take that and to drink that water of life and to live forever. Only Jesus will satisfy your heart. And I hope that you choose him today.